चरण हम धव कुंज बिहारे जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारे गोपी जानवल गिरिवरदारे गोपी जानवल गिरिवरदारे यशोर नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोर नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुन तेरा चरे यमुना तेरवन चे जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारे जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारे जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारे परमहंस परिवार जी कुछ अष्टोत्र शत शीर्ष मारे जबाइन गए से इस वक्त विधानता स्वयं प्रभुपाद की जाय जय ओम विष्णुपाद पर महमस परिवार जो कुछ अष्टोत्र शत शीर्ष मार हिज डिवाइन गए शुद्ध भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर प्रभुपाद की जाय Kantaraj Shrimad Bhagavatam ki jai all glories to the assembled devotees all glories to the assembled devotees all glories to the assembled devotees all glories to shri guru and shri gauranga नम भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नम भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नम भगवते वासुदेवाय So this morning we are reading from the Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto Four, entitled "Creation of the Fourth Order," Chapter Twenty Seven, Attack by Chanda Vega on the City of Pranjana, and we're on Text uh, Seven. Translation and commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. शिलाय गुणोपेताजन्य प्रजापते दुहित्रे दुहित्रेशता प्रतिमात्रेयशस्क 
Shiladaya Guno Peta Pranjanya Pajapate To hit the Dushatara Shatam Pitri Matri Yashaskari Shri Laudarya Guna Peta Pauranjanya Pajapate To hit three daughters, Dasha Uttara, ten more than Shatam, one hundred, Pitri, like the father, Matri, and mother, Yashaskari, glorified, Shila, good behavior, Adarya, magnanimity. Guna, good qualities. Upetaha, possessed of. Paranjanaha, daughters of Paranjana. Prajapate, O Prajapati. Translation. O Prajapati, King Prachinibari shot. In this way, King Paranjan also begot 110 daughters. All of these were equally glorified like the father and mother. Their behavior was gentle, and they possessed magnanimity and other good qualities. Purport. Children begotten under the rules and regulations of the scriptures generally become as good as the father and mother. But children born illegim- illegitimately mainly become Varnashankar. The Varnashankar population is irresponsible to the family, community, and even to themselves. Formerly, the Varnashankar population was checked by the observation of the reformatory method called Garbhadana Samskara, a child beginning religious ceremony. In this verse, we find that although King Pranjana had begotten so many children, they were not Varnashankar. All of them were good, well-behaved children, and they had good qualities like their father and mother. Even though we may produce many good children, our desire for sex, that is beyond the prescribed method, is to be considered sinful. Too much enjoyment of any of the senses, not only sex, results in sinful activities. Therefore, one has to become a swami or go swami at the end of his life. One may beget children up to the age of 50, but after 50 one must stop begetting children and should accept the Vanaprastha order. 
In this way, he must leave home and then become a sannyasi. A sannyasi's title is Swami or Goswami, which means that he completely refrains from sense enjoyment. One should not accept the sannyas order whimsically. He must be fully confident that he can restrain his desires for sense gratification. King Pranjana's family life was, of course, very happy. As mentioned in these verses, he begot 1,100 sons and 110 daughters. Everyone desires to have more sons than daughters. And since the number of daughters was less than the number of sons, it appears that King Pranjan's family life was very comfortable and pleasing. Om Ajnana Tivadanda Sya Gananjana Shalakaya Chakshulan Maditamya Tasmai Shri Gurveda Maha Kam Karivachalam Pangam Langai Tegidim Yakripatamaham Vande Shigurun Initarinam Vancha Kapadri Bhishta Kripa Sindhubevcha Patitanam Pavani Bio Vaishtavi Bio Namona Maha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadada Shivasari Gauru Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare I'm going to read the translation again. O Prajapati, King Prachani Barishat, King Prachani Barishat, in this way King Paranjana also begot 110 daughters. All of these were equally glorified like the father and mother. Their behavior was gentle, and they possessed magnanimity and other good qualities. <coughs> so once uh, His Holiness Jayadvaita Swami and His Holiness uh, Giraj Swami, my spiritual master, they, they were spending some time together. And what, what I suspect from their... Uh, from what I heard about their time together, it seemed maybe they had a late night preaching engagement or something like that. But anyways, uh, Jayadvaita Swami, he told my spiritual master that, so, so tomorrow morning, he, was, he said to my spiritual master, so, so tomorrow morning when uh, the alarm goes, goes off and then we, the, when we wake up to uh, you know, engage in you know, morning, uh, early morning hearing and chanting, uh, can you please wake me up? So Jayadvaita <laughs> Swami was telling my spiritual, can you please wake me up? And, uh, and Jayadvaita Swami was telling my spiritual master that whatever I say, whatever I say, whatever I do, just make sure I get up. <laughs> Don't let me sleep. Make sure I get up. Um, so... So yeah, but this is, um, you could say this is Goswami life, or this is even, you could say, uh, Goswami training, that there are certain um, principles that one lives by, and what one tries to live what by, what, what one endeavors to live by, and ultimately, ultimately what principles that one lives by. And a devotee, uh, they use their intelligence how to mold their life in such a way where they could follow these principles. They, they engage their intelligence. Like Jayadvaita Swami, he was engaged in his intelligence that, okay, it seems that I'm going to have a hard time waking up, so please wake me up. <laughs> that was his, uh, using his intelligence. And so this is what a Goswami does. They use their intelligence in the best way um, so that they can make the most advancement, spiritual advancement, in Krishna consciousness, and so they could help others also. Uh, but this is also, um, it's not that just Goswami should do this, but there's, you know, training to be Goswamis, you know, training to have our mind and senses under control, and this is part of the process. That just a simple thing like waking up, it's like people talk about becoming Goswami and pure devotee and all these different things, it's good. Um, but the first step <laughs> is such a simple, you know, simple thing, just okay, the alarm goes off, just rise early in the morning. 
Now, this may seem like it's uh, referring to, I don't know, some recent events or something, but uh, <laughs> I was actually thinking about this uh, some time, days ago, so it's, n anyways. Guilt, yeah, guilt-free. That he said guilt-free. <laughs> so um, now, of course, in the in the process of engaging our senses, because that's what a Goswami does. They engage their senses in Krishna service. That's how they're able to in the service of the spiritual master. That's how they. That's the only way to control the senses. That's how they control their senses and mind. Now, of course, in the process of doing that, the the training. Um, there may be, there may be a failure. There may be f in, in the in the process. Now, that doesn't mean that one should give up because if what's once one gives up, then <laughs> there's no chance of becoming a swami or Goswami. There's no chance at all. You're, you're out of the. You're out of the league. You're, you're yeah. You're out of the training. So therefore the the glory of the brahmacharya ashram or the glory of any ashram is that there's devotees in that could encourage us that okay we may have failed in, in this fashion or that fashion but they encourage us okay well i also failed <laughs> they'll they say but this is how i overcome it overcame it um give some advice association just like once there was this devotee, and he had a he had a, he had quite a temper, anger, um, and uh, so anyways, one of his friends they they went to him and they said, Prabhu, you know I you know you're my friend, I I I, I like you, you know I love you dearly, but I, I until you control your temper, I can't I can't associate with you anymore. Which is kind of, I mean, it's it's pretty strong. Like if 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 you have a really good friend, like, and you go up to him and say, "I can't associate with you anymore until you control your anger," and then this devotee he realized that, wow, I I I, I should try to change myself, and he endeavored in that way, and uh, according to him, you know, he got better. So so yeah, it's there's no. There's no like surprise that in the process of training that there'll be some um, failures, some uh, mistakes. But then, how do we deal with that? Um, we have to deal with it in such a way that we we make more and more advancement. Uh, so just this idea. Now, of course, of somebody. We're talking about uh, rising early in the morning. Now, that's a that's a that's a basic spiritual principle in all um, authentic uh, spiritual paths within the world. Rising early. There's actually something in uh, in uh, Islam. They say that um, the the followers of Islam. They say that uh, my spiritual master was associating with some of them in Pakistan when he was preaching there years ago. And um, I think in Mumbai too, there's some Muslims coming to the Juhu Temple. But they told my spiritual master that there's some saying that Allah, God, Allah, hears your prayers more in the morning. <laughs> hears them more in the morning. You know, they're more potent. He could, there's more of a clear, you know, like when you're on a phone call, more of a clear connection. Which is important because, I mean, try talking on the phone, you don't have a clear con uh, connection. Very difficult. So, um, so yeah, rising early in the morning is basic principle throughout so many spiritual paths. And uh, now, of course, in the temples, uh, those living in the temples, it's uh, yeah, like a it's, it's a requirement to to l wake rise early in the morning. But Prabhupada would advise all devotees to do that, whether you're living in the temple or not. But of course, uh, some people may have a hard time waking up early. <laughs> they have this saying, oh, I, I, I'm a night owl, right? I, I'm not really a morning person. Like, anyways, my sister, one of my sisters said, yeah, I'm not really a morning person. Well, I was saying, well, you, she, I don't really like rising early in the morning. She has to get up. She's a nurse. She goes to the hospital really early in the morning. 
Well, I said, well, if you're going to continue with this profession, you, you should try to learn how to like it. <laughs> and she said, oh, well, uh, maybe I'm just not a morning person. Well, I said, you could become a morning person through the training and a certain mindset, you know, going to sleep earlier the next day and you, you know. So, so yeah, devotees may have a hard time rising early in the morning. Um, so, uh, specifically, I'm talking about those who, who are living outside. Um, so then there's this idea, okay, if you can't rise by four, then do what you can do. Okay, rise by five. Right? Rise by 5.30 a.m., yeah. <laughs> Six a.m. You know, do what you can. Um, in this way, a uh, person can make advancement. Um, and by doing what you can, gradually you'll develop that determination to do more, right? To, to get closer to the actual standard. Um, so we could do that, whether it's waking up or so many things. There's so many little things that add up that, that we could do. Like... It's such a simple thing, offering your food. Of course, we're offering everything to the deities here, Shushi Radhagiridari. And those who are living outside, say, oh, I don't have any time to do it, or whatever, but it's a simple thing. You add it to your life, and it, and it, and it yeah, become more Krishna conscious. So, uh, but we have to try to... Uh, make sure that the standard that we're trying to come to is actual is an actual standard <laughs> not that it's like some hallucination uh hallu what, is, what do you call hallucination what's a hallucit yeah yeah that's a word hallucinatory okay all right good hallucinatory standard it's we have to make sure it's it's a real standard um just like not just like we had one of our bhaktas here in the temple recently, they had a dream. You know, sometimes if you, uh, your alarm goes off in the morning, your alarm goes off at four, and then you turn it off, and then you, okay, snooze it for 10 minutes or something. So sometimes when you go to sleep for 10 minutes, you'll have a quick dream. So one of our bhaktas had a dream. <laughs> well, the dream was that, the dream was that I came to him in the dream and I said, I was, all right, Krishna. I was, I was, I was quoting Rajanjananda Prabhu, who, by the way, what, what I'm, what I'm about to say, he would never say. <laughs> so, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. So in this dream, you know it's a dream because, so in this dream, Rajanjananda Prabhu said, all right, all right, dear Bhakta, so and so. Um, we, t we told me that we're going to re we're rescheduling Mangal Arti for for noon, <laughs> and uh, and then and then and then I came and then I came to the Bhakt and I said, "This is what Rajendra Prabhu said." I'm just passing the message, so you know we're going to have it at noon, Mangal Arti. So. Um, now, that entails that from <laughs> the night time, at whatever time you go to sleep, I don't know, 11, 12, 1, whatever time you go to sleep, that entails that Mangal Arti is at noon time. So that means in that morning time, I got some free time, you know, to sleep, probably, most likely. A lot of people, still people do that, actually. I mean, Pacific Beach is probably full of those people. Go to sleep really late and sleep till, you know, like one devotee was telling me, yeah, your name. One devotee was telling me before he joined, he said he was on this program. He, they would party all night, you know, one, two, three, four, five in the morning. They'd go to sleep, wake up at whatever, two, three, you know, do a few things, and then start partying again at five. You know, it's like a whole. So, um, so yeah, now if someone wants to say, okay, well, I'll eventually come to the standard of, you know, uh, um, so in other words, a standard has to be a real standard that we're moving towards waking up earlier. So, <laughs> yeah. And this is important because it, all of these uh, principles, they, uh, they cleanse the mind. 
they cleanse the mind. Chaito Darpana Marjana, which is extremely important. I mean, everybody practically throughout the world can agree that it's important to, to, to bathe every day. Yeah, you'd be surprised. <laughs> so, now, what if someone was not to bathe for a day, two days, three days, five days? Now, does anybody wor know the world's record, how, how long someone didn't bathe for? Buck to Joe, really? <laughs> oh, really? Oh, he, he, anyway, yeah, Buck to Joe. Oh, really? Okay. He lives in the temple? Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I don't know if there's a record. I was just going to make something up, you know, two years or something. <laughs> but imagine, imagine if someone wasn't to bathe for like a year or two. I mean, you don't even want to imagine. Sorry, sorry to, but it's terrible. It would be terrible, you know. It would be absolutely terrible. Not brush. In Europe, they thought it was unhealthy to bathe. Yeah, Vijay Prabhu is saying in Europe they thought it was unhealthy to bathe at one point. Yeah, centuries ago. Well, the emphasis is for the perfume industry. The perfume industry... One of the emphasis for the perfume industry has um, came from this uh, in the in the past. Yeah, those in Europe not bathing, right? Yes. Oh. Uh. Smoke what? Dung. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, anyways, we get the idea. We get the idea. So, so now people think it's very important to cleanse the body. Now, now, what about the mind? Now, what about the mind? It's important to cleanse the mind, also. Just as important. When you say more important. No, just important. Because you know, if one has a dirty mind, if the mind is 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 full with all types of uh, unclean things, then that's also very unpleasant. That's unpleasant for oneself. Now, someone would say, oh, it's someone, if, if you weren't to bathe, it'd be very unpleasant, even for yourself. I mean, if you're really in the mode of ignorance, you're not, not realizing that, but it's definitely unpleasant for others. But so similarly with the mind, you're living so close. You know, those who have some uh, sattvic, uh, yeah, development, I mean, if due to some weird circumstance they're not able to bathe, I mean, it's, it's, it's a botheration. They think, oh, man, I'm dirty. And, you know, you're like on a plane or something or whatever the case is. You're, and you're, you know, it's, they have to bathe. So, so there it's a, it becomes annoying. So similarly with the mind, the mind is like, it's a very close to, to us. And if it's not cleansed, then, yeah, it remains like an enemy, a uh, smelly enemy. <laughs> Um, so therefore, Cheto Darpana Marjanam, Bhava Mahadav Agni Nirvarpanam, that we're cleansing the mind through the process of hearing and chanting about Krishna. So that's a great need, and that's a great, um, yeah, must. And uh, so we do that by setting these standards. You know, we try to keep on setting standards for ourselves, that which are real standards based on sadhu, the ho saintly person, scripture, and um, the spiritual master, and gradually, yeah, by following these, w we will we cleanse our mind and um, become more Krishna conscious and become, yeah, Goswamis. And recently, I, I heard this by, uh, but anyways, in, in relation, just before we get to that, but in relation to becoming a Goswami, what this purport is mentioning, one of the things this purport is mentioning, Srila Prabhupada mentions in his. Uh, preface to the nectar of instruction. Very powerful. So he says, in all spiritual affairs, one's first duty is to control his mind and senses. Unless one controls his mind and senses, one cannot make any advancement in spiritual life. Everyone within this material world is engrossed in the modes of passion and ignorance. One must promote himself to the platform of goodness, sattva gun, by following the instructions of Rupa Goswami. And then everything concerning how to make further uh, progress will be revealed. So then Prabhupada says how, yeah, I'll just read it here. Um, 
Advancement in Krishna consciousness depends on the attitude of the follower. So, oh, why aren't I making an advancement? Okay, well, one, one should analyze their attitude. A follower of the, of the Krishna consciousness movement should become a perfect Goswami. Vaishnavas are generally known as Goswamis. In Vrindavan, this is the title by which the director of each temple is known. One who wants to be a perfect devotee of Krishna must become a Goswami. Go means senses, and Swami means master. And thus, one controls his senses and mind, one cannot become a Goswami. To achieve the highest success in life by becoming a Goswami and then a pure devotee of the Lord, one must follow the instructions given by Sri Rupa Goswami in the Upadesha Rita. So, uh, so yeah, one uh, must become a go- one must become a Goswami or Swami, and it's not that everyone must formally accept the uh, position within society as a as a Swami, but everyone should 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 control their senses and mind, and. Uh, and recently, in, in relation to uh, developing determination, because after all, determination, in the process, the, the Swami training, or the Goswami training, it's, uh, we need a lot of de- determination. I mean, it's so important. I mean, if you don't have any determination, I mean, pff, I mean <laughs> there's no chance. So, Jai, uh, Jai Patak, His Holiness Jai Bhattaka Swami, he was asked about this uh, determination. And thinking in my mind now, <laughs> He is an extremely determined person uh, on so many levels, you know, what he's done throughout his life and, and what he's doing now. So, um, so he, he was asked by a devotee, so the, the question was, uh, Maharaj, sometimes I make vows on a Kadashi or, um, or um, Kartik, but I'm not able to follow them completely. You know, what should I do? And how do I develop determination? So then Maharaj said, um, why take a vow? Uh, If you take a vow, you have to follow it. So he said, whatever you could follow, um, you vow to do that. So whatever you could do, whatever you can actually do, you vow to do that. And he said, by doing that, you'll develop your determination to do more. And then he said, but if you can't do that, <laughs> sometimes you can make this big vow, but you can't do that, but then you make a small, but you can't do that either. So if you can't do that, he said, you can make a sankalpa. And sankalpa is, as he describes it here, that something that s- you have an idea of what you like to do, and you try your best to do it. And then he said, if you can't do that, then you should apologize. And then you should say, in the future, you should try to take a sankalpa to do what uh, to do what you can do. And then he said, in this way, gradually you develop your determination. So that was his answer. So it's very practical. And um, but yeah, devotee. I mean, one of the one of the names, one of the you could say um, qualities of a of a sannyasi. They say is that it is it's called yati. Means they're always striving towards becoming more and more Krishna conscious and also trying to help others become Krishna conscious preaching. So yati, they're always striving. So so that's necessary, that devotees should always be striving. Just like recently, we have our Damodar Kumar Prabhu here and Danavari also. She, uh, as far as I understand, she initiated this program where she went to Trader Joe's and she said, I want to get donations from you regularly. How can I do that? And, you know, they went through this whole system, and now we're getting regular donations from Trader Joe's, which it's good produce, and a lot. (laughs) And it's saved the temple so much money. But aside from that, we need someone to pick it up. (laughs) So Damodar Kumar Prabhu has been picking it up and, you know, developing some nice relationships with the workers there. And... And this is Goswami life, and this is Goswami training, that we engage the senses in Krishna's service, and we maintain that service. And in this way, uh, right, we engage our body, and then our mind will follow. Um, so, of course, there's many things about here about 
Varnashankara that there's a whole there's a whole system ceremony in which um, you know religious life in which people are uh, advised to have children. Also, just having children. It's not that one just decides, okay, I'm going to have children, but but actually they get the permission of, permission of the spiritual master, you know, to have children and her family life and all that. And um, so, in other words, there's a whole system how to do things properly for the best result for oneself and for the world. So it's not that, oh, let's just have children, but there's actually a way to do it for the best result, in, in, in which they don't become Varna Shankar, which Prabhupada describes them as they're irresponsible to their family, to the community, and even to themselves. So um, if one is, if one will, is going to have children, which we have some devotees who have children here, and we have some devotees who, I don't know, may have children here, uh, it's not a whimsical thing. It's a serious thing, and and uh, you know, to it says actually one should not become a parent or a father or a mother or practically accept any position of responsibility if they're not able to de deliver their dependents from the cycle of birth and death. So they have to really try to educate them, and especially when they're young. There's a lot of you know. So, um, yeah, but Prabhupada says that up to 50, then after 50, one should uh, stop begetting children, should enter Vana Prasta order, which they, you know, retire from working for money and they devote more, more of their time and energy to, to spiritual life. And in some cases, uh, the, the, the man will eventually accept sannyas and the um, travel and and preach the message, and in some cases, uh, you know, the the wife and husband will remain as vanaprastas. So, whatever the case is, there's there's a there's an injunction that when one is getting older, they should devote more and more in their time to direct uh, Krishna consciousness. So, all right, does anybody have any uh, questions or yes comments? I was just curious, how would you answer, they say, uh, family life is happier if you have more sons and daughters. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So Prabhupada says here that everyone desires to have more sons than daughters, and since the number of daughters was less than the number of sons, it appears that King Pranjana's family life was very comfortable and pleasing. Now, the psychological reason, um, reasoning why... Uh, you know, people want to have more sons than daughters, uh, and why it could be seen as more pleasing. I mean, maybe other devotees could comment on this idea, but one thing is that within traditional Vedic culture, there's there's this, there's an idea that okay, there's a husband and a wife, and they have some sons, some daughters, and specifically, there the the, the, the system is is that. If there's a son, then the son uh, will take responsibility for the for the uh, for the mother or for the for the wife <coughs> means the his mother went in her old age. Not like nowadays with the system of uh, um, what are they what are they called? Old age, old age homes, yeah, convalescent <laughs> home. <laughs> Retirement village. We have one right. Ac we have one right across the road here. It's a big one, right here. Um, it's it's tough because some of those people. I mean, they don't <laughs> Caesar worlds. Yeah. Anyway, some of those people have no one practically. I mean, their 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 children leave them there, and then they have um, my. Anyways, what, and s some of my in, um, kind of distant family, due to circumstances, finances, this, that, so many things. One of them's in there right now. She's she's su a really nice lady, but she was telling my mother. My mother was talking on the phone. She was telling my mother how, yeah, it's you know, I don't I don't really have many people visiting me, and you know, I'm not in my home. And then she said, um, she said how how the people, the workers, are very impersonal. They just come in, and you know you're more or less like a, I'm gonna say like a lawn chair or furniture or something. But you know you just you know they come in and they do what they have to do, and they may not even say hi, and they just leave. 
Now, my mother was saying maybe those people should get different jobs because they're not doing, you know, you're supposed to make them feel comfortable and happy and all that. So my mother, when she was, uh, you know, years ago, probably when she was in her her late 20s, early 30s or something, but she she understood, and, you know, she had some religious kind of pious type of mentality, and she understood, okay, there's people suffering in these homes. So she would go to these homes, Anyways, she'd go to these homes and she would tell, she would ask the workers, okay, you tell me which person doesn't get any visitors. And then she would go there and then, you know, there was this one person that could hardly talk, this and that. You know, she opened up the window, you know, read a little Bible to her, whatever, just kind of give her some association. And, uh, but the point is there's people like that. Like, so many. I mean, it's really depressing, actually. So within Vedic culture, it's not like that at all. The culture is that, okay, the son, he'll, he'll take care of the, the parents in their old age. Not that, oh, bothersome, you know, move them out. He now, he has 1,100. <laughs> so now, why is it more pleasing, or, or why is it, uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe other devotees have some type of, um, right. yes. Uh, one has to take the whole picture also Um, but just to answer this just like you said uh, you have more sons generally it means means you have more security and you have more wealth they're all earning you know if you take in the culture they're earning they're making more so you're you're in a more secure position you have more wealth in your family more land more wealth like that Um, also with daughters Vedic tradition and even in the West for many many years you know until relatively recently, there's dowry. So if you have a bunch of daughters, <laughs> yeah. uh, then you have to pay for that. It's a lot of money. They had that priest who had four daughters in uh, Tirupati, so he actually, someone donated a diamond. He stole the diamond, sold it. Yeah. Went all the way from South India to um, Mumbai to sell the thing, walked into a shop, they fixed the price, uh, come back this afternoon, so the guy went, got a mango lawsuit, whatever, came back in the <laughs> afternoon. And police were there waiting for him. Yeah. Because he'd gone so many cities in India, in Mumbai, so many diamond shops. He'd walked into the exact same shop of the jeweler who donated the diamond. <laughs> and he went to this true story. So don't mess with Balaji. But so there's the dowry issue. But also in the Bhagavatam, and I can speak as a father, um, it says that. Uh, sure, we like sons, all of that, but Prabhupada says right in the Bhagavatam that the daughter holds a special place within the heart of the father. Yeah. So it's not that, you know, women are just chattel in the Vedic literature. It doesn't mean that at all. Yeah. You have to take the whole picture, you have to understand the ec- economics, and you have to also take this statement. You know, who was it? Jitarasya had, was it a hundred sons? Or maybe it was the father, but they wanted a daughter. She wanted a daughter, you know, so... You know, in, yeah. in, in proper Vedic culture, they want a daughter. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was, shh, I'm sorry to bring it up, but there, and I heard, I don't know, maybe maybe other devotees heard too, or you could, whatever, but devotees were telling me that nowadays in India, yeah, they don't, they don't allow the, the parents to know whether it's a boy or a girl, because there's this whole problem that, you know, people, you yeah, know, people were engaged in abortion because if it was a girl, they think, oh, the dower, this and that. So, so they didn't want to deal. Yeah. Seven yeah. Million a year. Oh, seven million. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so this, uh, so anyways, these devotees were telling me that. Um, seven million. Seven million. Seven million in India. Yeah. A year. So these devotees were telling me that, because they, whatever, they're about to have a child. They're telling me how, uh, oh yeah, we don't know <laughs> whether it's a boy or a girl. They're a Ru- Russian-American couple. They're telling, oh, we don't know if it's a boy or a girl. So, you know, they went to Russia to find out. Of course, they would never think of that, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jagannath it, Tirta. I think it turned... I think it was a girl. Isn't it? Yeah, a girl. Yeah. <laughs> they would do that. Can I ask a question? About yes. This important verse that you referred to. Uh, Rishabh Dev, uh, where he says, Guru Nasasya, I want you not become a guru, I want you not become a father, mother, demigod, if you can't uh, deliver your dependents, your mm-hmm. ward. But 
how do we understand that, say, in the modern age? Because you may be able to do that. You, t you teach them, you bring, I mean, I've seen so many parents that bring their little babies and see the deities and they raise them. But, uh, but everyone has free will. So even though you may try like anything, they may not want to be delivered. They say, I'm going out, you know. So have you, have you not, have you, f uh, you know, it's disappointing, but if you, if you can do it, you know how to do it, you're following strictly, and you raise them, but it, it still may not work because of bad association. So how do we understand this verse? Was that still an authorized yeah, I mean child? It, you, you did the best you could. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, uh, if one is, if one, if one, uh, the, one should be one should be qualified as a as a as an authoritative authority figure. They should be qualified to to deliver their dependents from the cycle of birth and death. They should be Christian conscious. They should be able to educate them and you know give them a good example and teach them and everything. And if they try their best, <laughs> and they try their best, and they try their best, and they try their best, what else can they do? I mean, it's another person's just really not you know reciprocating, and then it's. You know, like even in the case of some of our acharyas, um, even Sri the Prabhupada or Avaita Charya, there, there was Vena Maharaj. Yeah, Vena. Ma oh, that was that was a really bad case. He was. His, his father was, or um, what's his uh, um, Anga, Anga Maharaj Anga. His father was so disturbed by his son. I mean. His father was so disturbed by his son, he, um, his son had said he would, yeah, sorry, but he said he would go out, you know, be, be, you know, hanging out with the boy, you know, hang out with his friends, and he said he would, like, you know, kill some of his friends that was out there, and, and just really terrible person. Eventually, his father was so upset, his father, Maharajanga, he just left in the middle of the night, you know, accepted sannyas, so. But yeah, if one try, 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 and then hopefully, and a lot of the times you don't see it, like you really try, and you don't see, oh, is it really, are they really Christian conscious, is it really manifest? And sometime later, a lot of the times, you know, they come back, they become more Christian conscious. Like one devotee was telling me recently about their daughter. Anyways, but, you know, she's taking more shelter of the Bhagavatam now, reading, chanting, and all these things. So it's like they could go back on that at least, you know, that training. So or you have a... Prahlad Maharaj, he has the verse where even if you have the best boat or the best doctor or the best parents, it's not that you will automatically. All right. All right. Gantarat Shrimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai.